Okay, welcome to question 5 and part A. So first of all then find the exact value of fg of 4. So fg of 4 means that first of all we substitute 4 for x into the function g. So what we'll have is f of and if we put 4 then into g we have 2 over 4 minus 3. And we know that 4 take away 3 is 1 and 2 divided by 1 is 2 so this is equal to f of 2. And this means now that wherever there is an x in the function f we replace it with 2. So this is going to be equal to the natural log of 2 times 2, 2 times 2, minus the 1. So this is going to equal the natural log of 4, take 1, which is 3, the natural log of 3. And it said find the exact value, so we don't want to use a calculator, otherwise we're just going to get a messy decimal. So that gives us a clue that we're expecting something like this. So natural log of 3 is the answer then to part A. OK, moving on now to part B. Now in part B, we've got to find the inverse function f to the minus 1 of x and state its domain. When you're finding inverse functions, the method that I use, okay, is to uh, take the function, let's just put it down, okay, first of all. We've got f is such that x maps onto the natural log of 2x minus 1. What I like to do here is we're going to try and work backwards because that's what the inverse function is essentially doing. So I'd always say let OK, x equal, and wherever I see x's in my function here, I'd replace them with y's. So I have the natural log of 2y minus 1. OK, and now what I have to do is rearrange this equation to make y the subject. And so therefore, the next step would be to anti-log both sides. So that would give me e to the power x, because I'm dealing with natural logs, which are essentially logs to the base e. So I get e to the x equals 2y minus 1. So if I add 1 to both sides, I'm going to get e to the x plus 1 equals 2y. I'm going to rearrange it so it looks like 2y equals e to the x plus 1. Then finally, I divide both sides by 2, so I get y equals e to the x plus 1, all divided by 2. OK? I could obviously write half bracket e to the x plus 1 if I wished. OK, and all we need to do now is just wind this up by stating that the inverse function okay of f is equal to and just copy this down as e to the x plus 1 all divided by 2 okay and then next it says state the domain now we have to state the domain of the function the inverse function that is and e to the x we should know is valid for all values of x. If I add 1 and then divide by 2, it's still going to be valid for all values of x. So the domain okay, would be x can take on any real value. So I denote it like that. Okay, so that is part B.